Hello there. This video is going to be about elders. And as many of you know, elders are responsible in the Jehovah's Witness faith for teaching, for directing the ministry work, for being involved judicially and uh, disfellowshipping people if needs be uh, from the congregation. So they have quite heavy responsibilities when it comes to basically enforcing Watchtower's requirements on a local level. I refer to them as line managers of Watchtower because that's essentially what they are. And when I was an elder for 12 months, it very quickly became obvious to me that the claims made about Watchtower regarding elders being um, appointed by Holy Spirit just were ludicrous because I could see for myself how much um, politics was involved in the elder arrangement, how easy it was for somebody with a strong personality to completely manipulate all the other elders and have everything his own way. So I've known for a long time personally that the idea of elders being appointed by Holy Spirit is ridiculous, but I wanted to do a video addressing that question directly because there is um, a new watchtower out, the November 15th, 2014 watchtower, which has a question from readers on the appointment of elders. And on page 28, it specifically addresses this idea of um, that the role of the Holy Spirit in the appointment of elders. And I'll read you what it has to say. What role does Holy Spirit play in the appointment of elders and ministerial servants today? First, Holy Spirit moved the Bible writers to record the qualifications for elders and ministerial servants. 16 different requirements of elders are listed at 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 7. Further qualifications are found in such scriptures as Titus 1, 5 to 9 and James 3, 17, 18. Qualifications for ministerial servants are outlined at 1 Timothy 3, 8 to 10 and 12 and 13. Second, those recommending and making such appointments specifically pray for Jehovah's Spirit to direct them as they review whether a brother meets the scriptural requirements to a reasonable degree. Third, the individual being recommended needs to display the fruitage of God's Spirit in his own life. So God's Spirit is involved in all aspects of the appointment process. Now, just to kind of paraphrase what it's saying here, it's essentially saying that elders should be considered as being appointed by God's Holy Spirit because the qualifications contained in the Bible were written by God's Holy Spirit. And therefore, if someone meets those qualifications, then they can be considered as being appointed by God's Holy Spirit. And included in that is the idea that you know, um, elders will pray for the Holy Spirit in making their decision to appoint another elder. Now, this should be obvious as being ridiculous. and But just in case it isn't obvious, I want to illustrate how ridiculous this is. And the way I'm going to do it is with a um, an advertisement for a job. And I've, I just, I've just kind of done a brief bit of Googling around and I've found a job advertisement for the Director of Credit Operations, EMEA PayPal. So this is for a senior position within PayPal. And it says, um, job, job qualifications, an M MBA, BA degree or equivalent practical experience relevant industry. So you need to have a degree to be the Director of Credit Operations at PayPal. And then it goes on to explain experience. You need to be an expert with significant knowledge of the credit sector and experience working across different aspects of consumer credit, etc., etc. Knowledge, skills and abilities. Passion, passionate about connecting people to a vision and purpose. Strong leadership skills, etc., etc. Now, supposing you just so happen to meet all of these criteria, so say, for example, I had a BA degree or equivalent practical experience within the credit control sector or whatever it is. It wouldn't be enough for me to meet all of those 
every single one of those criteria in the job advertisement, what I would need in order to be the director of credit operations at PayPal is to attend an interview and to be chosen by PayPal and for PayPal to sign a contract of employment so that I can officially be a representative of PayPal. It isn't enough to simply say, well, if you meet all of these qualifications, hey presto, you are the director of credit operations at PayPal. But that's essentially what this logic that Watchtower uses is saying. It's saying, if you meet all of the criteria <clears throat> that are listed in the Bible, that has been inspired by God's Holy Spirit, then hey presto, you are the person that that Bible verse is talking about. But that is clearly not how it works. And then it, to go on and say things like, well, it's not just that, um, those who appoint elders pray for Jehovah's Holy Spirit. Well, <laughs> it, it, does this mean that if I want this job at PayPal, I need to pray for PayPal Spirit? It's completely ludicrous when you think about it. Essentially, there is no evidence whatsoever that any elder enjoys um, a, a, a status of being appointed by God's Holy Spirit. And anyone that says they they are appointed by Holy Spirit are deluding themselves and deluding you. The simple truth is, as I've explained, is that when you're an elder, you are chosen by people who just so happen to have been chosen themselves as elders at some point, regardless of whether they're good people or bad people. And believe me, there are lots of bad elders, lots of bullies who are elders, who insist on their own their own ideas about the organization being maintained, even if they're not specifically spelled out in the literature. And any idea that, that God has a role in this, um, it's just ridiculous. So probably I've rambled a bit there, but I just, if nothing else, I hope I can encourage you, if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, to just think about what that passage is saying in that watchtower. It's basically admitting that there is no direct correlation between God or God's Holy Spirit and an elder. It's saying that if a person fulfills XYZ criteria, then they're an elder. Well, surely there must be more to it than that. Surely if you're going to say that you have been appointed by God to a certain position, you need to demonstrate a direct link between you and the person whose authority you claim. Just as if I were to call myself the director of operations at PayPal or whatever, it wouldn't be enough for me to just say that I work for PayPal. If I wanted to prove it, I would need to show you a signed contract of employment, uh, maybe my company car, maybe my desk within PayPal headquarters in Ireland or wherever, it, or wherever it is, I would expect you to expect from me some kind of evidence for the claims I'm making. But Watchtower doesn't feel the need to give you any evidence whatsoever and they don't require elders to give any evidence for, the, for them being uh, appointed by Holy Spirit. It's just purely a case of Take our word for it. And that's how it is with everything Watchtower teaches. We're God's organization, take our word for it. The governing body are God's faithful and discreet slave, take our word for it. Jesus appointed the organization between 1914 and 1919. He was present invisibly and made that appointment, take our word for it. Elders are appointed by Holy Spirit, take our word for it. At some point, if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, you need to stand back and think how much Am I prepared to believe based on zero evidence? So hopefully I've uh, got that point across and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.